Hello, and welcome to my desktop. <laughs> so, this is Game Guru Max Live broadcast. Um, I don't know whether you can see my splash screen or not. Um, I was playing around with the idea of moving the live chat into a window, uh, but my experiments have not been entirely fruitful. In fact, they've been pretty awful. So I've decided not to do the live broadcast uh, live chat in its own separate window and you're going to have to suffer the idea of the old cascading uh, live chat. And so you probably do see the live chat. You can ask your questions as usual. And at, at the end of my little rant, I will be able to answer some of those questions and then answer the rest of them at the end of this. Um, broadcast in the form of Game Guru thread that I'll post along with this recorded video. Um, so, sorry for the uh, unorthodox start. I wanted to be really clever and show you this floating live chat window. <laughs> but it, all it says is live chat is unavailable, so I'm not going to show it to you because it won't be very useful. So, I've got a lot to say uh, today. I've got a lot of little things I'd like to show you. Um, starting, of course, with uh, progress on the hands and arms, which will be both used in VR and non-VR. So let me just close down the browser and show you the first video. <laughs> so we've got a full screen for you. There's no audio. Um, and the last uh, video that I made, you saw the arms and the hands as static. Well, we now we've rigged them. So now we've rigged them and then we could apply some animations. And as you can see, they look really good. And you'll be at this is sort of the perspective you'll see if you don't have anything in your hands, you're not holding anything, but maybe you're moving around the scene and you want to pick some things up. And of course, if you've got weapons or you've got something else, then obviously you'd carry them. But in VR mode, um, we're going to have a little bit of fun because <laughs> initially the controller will be able to move the hands around and orient them and then grip and then ungrip. But my ambition after the launch in September is. There's a new technology now, it's been around for a while, but a technology called hand tracking. Um, certainly the Oculus Quest has it. I've tested it out a few days ago, it's really good. And so the idea is that your individual fingers can be detected for movement and those can be translated into these hands. But don't get too excited about that yet. That's just one of those little future blue sky ideas that I may introduce at some point. Uh, but I thought it was worth mentioning. And just to show you a little bit of the work that's gone into these hands, and it's not just the hands, it's the arms as well. So if I just show you this little illustration, um, you'll see that traditionally you just have shoulders, arms and hands, and then you want to twist the hands, you would tw twist the wrist. Well, obviously that doesn't create good vertex deformation. And so we've spent extra time, I say we, <laughs> our artists have spent extra time doing basically lower arm twists, which is exactly, if you twist your arm right now, you'll actually see it's not just the wrist that twists. If you want to move your palm down to palm up, it's actually half your arm. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that we are representing that sort of that realism of animation in our arms and our hands uh, for Game Guru Max. So a lot of thought going into the, into the background of it, but hopefully it delivers a great experience. Um, just going to quickly check the chat, see if everyone can hear me okay. So hello everybody. Yes, thank you very much for your greetings. Looks like no one is complaining so far, which means I can carry on. Okay, so that's arms. Now I want to show you something else. Um, this one. <laughs> Ta-da! That's our new terrain. No, it isn't. No, that's the old Game Guru classic terrain, as you may. No, uh, it, there are a few issues with the old terrain painting system, specifically the banding. So the idea that you want to have some grass and then you paint down the rock and then the engine quite kindly crams in about four other textures between the grass and the rock. Because, of course, you want that. <laughs> so, and you saw the other artifacts, so you can't just paint a path over without considering the order those textures are actually placed in your texture palette. Who wants to mess around with texture ordering anyway? Not us. So what we've decided to do, should get back to the desktop and show you this one. This one was prepared by um, Mike, who's working on the terrain, as an example of what the new terrain is capable of doing. 
which is effectively, the best way I can describe it is like a large canvas. So the idea is you have blank canvas, you can paint some texture on it, then change the texture and then paint that over it and then change to a third brush, paint that, then a fourth one and you can layer on your textures in any order you want. So the idea is there is no longer this banding issue that you have to deal with. You can basically art it up and we're using something called a virtual texture or what used to be called a mega texture. So effectively this canvas you can draw on is huge. It is thousands and thousands of pixels across. We haven't quite decided the actual final metrics. We're going to work that with performance and uh, storage and other considerations like that. But it's effectively one of the best approaches to this problem. We're not going to complicated shader. The shader is now a very simple one. It's just pulling texture information and splatting it onto the terrain. But it also gives you maximum control. You can paint on this canvas anything you want. You can paint it one pixel at a time. Write your name in the sand, if you will. But don't take my word for it. Mike was kind enough to give me a small prototype that I can demonstrate. Now, of course, it's always prudent never to do live demonstrations in a live broadcast, unless you are forced to. I'm not forced to, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. I'm going to select a I think F5 is the brush, hard brush, well, let me paint it quickly, and there's our grass. So I'll reduce the brush again, go back to normal brush, and I think I select F6, yeah. And as you can see, I'm just moving to the brush, so now I'm painting a rocky path on top of the grass. I can just show you all the different brushes, got some sand, I'm over that, I can paint some rock, over that, I can paint some different kind of rock. Uh, obviously, I can go back to grass. I can paint the grass through there. I can paint the rock through here. There's another mode. We've been playing around with the attenuations of the brush. So let's say I wanted to feather in some of the rock. I can just feather in just a little bit of rock. Don't need a lot of rock. And so you can see what's going on here. It's no longer this case of having this very clever shader. That's not really clever after all. Um, to sort of construct all the different texture choices you want. You literally just paint onto, onto the terrain. Um, now at the moment I've been looking and playing around with this prototype, which is great by the way, it does everything I ever wanted and asked for. But you see how the grass is actually part of this rock because it's a single large texture. Wouldn't it be great if the grass was alpha out so all you actually saw was the rocks? So you can actually paint just these white blobby rocks onto any of the surface that already exists. So I'm not promising that one, by the way. It's just when you're a blue sky thinker, you're always looking at the next thing halfway through writing the first thing. So that's something to bear in mind. And uh, certainly make a feature request on it if uh, you find it didn't make it into the final version. Um, and another thing is just like a regular art, 2D art package, you will want to undo what you've done. So let's say I selected this one, went for a big brush, I went um, splat, and then, oh no, that was the path I just spent three hours on. Well, we're going to create something called uh, an undo buffer. So any area that you've affected, as you were drawing it, it managed to record what was there before and compress and store that in an undo buffer. And the cascade before that, and the cascade before that, and the cascade before that. Effectively, you're able to undo a lot of edits as you're painting under this terrain. Now, in the old system, the classic system, that was a little bit easier to manage because the final render was constructed for you by the shader. This is actually painted by you. So we're going to give you some ability to be able to undo any mistakes that you've made. But when you do save out your terrain, it's not going to remember, you know, a week's worth of your previous edits. So you would remember what you was doing a week ago. So the idea is you can undo and any mistakes, but generally carry on with this level of flexibility. So uh, thanks, Mike, for the prototype. Looking forward to the next one when it gets mapped actually onto the terrain. It's a large terrain. And there's going to be some auto texturing going on as well. So you yeah, either got rocks at the top, grass at the bottom, mud in the middle. Um, so that's his prototype. And now I want to show you mine, which isn't as impressive. It's certainly not as visual, but technically 
I'm quite pleased with it. So I'm just going to zoom down to this terrain. And we've got two light bulbs. The cellar demo for the moment has gone. I have erased it. I've left a couple of its bulbs. I needed to do that because I needed to expose the terrain floor. This isn't Mike's terrain. This is my really crude, badly uh, inserted, so I can actually test things like entity placement. And the thing I want to demonstrate is Uber character. So before, all I could do was bring in static characters. But now, as you can see, it's properly animating and skinning. Um, nice little feature of the Wicked Engine that you can see the bones as they exist within an animated model. That's a DBO, that was for one of the character creator. So it's great that those guys come in now. Um, I've also got Goblin. You might remember Goblin um, from probably 10 years ago. So that's a really early X file um, that was converted to a DBO and has a slightly different sort of internal data set. Um, but it still works. It still knows its bones, it knows its skins, its, uh, its animation data, and it goes about its business um, doing its animation. Got some other things I just want to drop in and show you. This one, which is just a pair of legs, is actually an X file of the legs uh, from the character creator that's gone through the asset importer. So as you can see, it's identical, same legs. It's just this one originated from my uh, DirectX parser. This one was the ASIB parser, and they do the same job. So that gives us a lot of confidence about the asset importer. And on that score, even though I'm still working on the importer, there's a lot of variants across GLTFs and FBXs, but I can show you where I am. I should really be showing you stuff that's too early. But have a look, show you the GLTF uh, Avalon. Rotating around a bit. Um, his animation speed is way too low, uh, but that's something else I'm going to have to look at because there are. Um, can seem to find it if you can control animation speed separately of the animation data that comes in with the model. But you can see Avalon is uh, moving very slowly. Now, Avalon was an asset that I bought from an asset store as GTLTF and I imported it. There's no textures at the moment, but I'll be putting them in. Uh, but the idea is that was actually loaded in through ASIMP. It was a GLTF through ASIMP. Then it got converted to DBO. Then it was structured and animated. And now it's rendered in Wicked. So that whole pipeline is now working. So I'm really pleased that I've cracked that nut. Animation is ticked. And as you can see, I'm now moving on to the next bit, which of course is dropping in entities, getting the widget working, the widget properties, and allowing us to start recreating the scene because then I'll be able to bring in back all of the cellar components, the walls, the floors, the tables, the chairs, and all the other things we're going to be adding to the cellar demo. So don't be too downhearted. You will see that cellar demo again. It's just not um, before it's done properly where you can actually put a grid down and then place all the floors and the pieces and they all lock together because they're already been prepared in that format. The seller demo that you've been seeing up to now has been a mock-up, but the next one you'll see will actually be created in Game Guru Max. So I'm just looking at the clock. Um, I've done quite well to actually keep it within 15 minutes for the talk, uh, but not giving you much chance to uh, get some answers to your questions. And I think it'll be very unfair if I ended the broadcast now. So I am gonna go through the chat. And I'm going to look for question marks, or the word question in square brackets, and I'm going to fire off some answers for a couple of minutes. I'm sure the uh, the game industry gods won't mind if I spend an extra four minutes live waffling away. So the first question mark is, your what's happening? Um, we're doing a live broadcast of Game Guru Max Development Progress, broadcast number seven. Moving to the next question mark. Um, here we go, uh, Mr. Creeper. How far will the character creator go, and will there be a form of logic system? And if yes, how advanced will it be? Um, for the plans on the character creator, look at Alpha Build 1. If you're a pre-order customer, you can download Alpha Build 1 and play with the character creator. That is what's going to be for the release. There's going to be a few little bits and bobs, sure, little tweaks, but generally that's it. The only thing we're really going to be doing um, around and after the release is adding more character parts. So more heads, more bodies, more legs, more shoes, more clothes, more apparel, stuff like that. Which of course is you'll need lots of it I think for all the characters that you'll want to make. 
but don't expect anything more than what you see in the Alpha Build 1 because that's pretty much it. We're now focusing on all the other things, the new graphics engine and the terrain, these, these sorts of things. Uh, Andy Dickinson, are the textures one in the new tool? Are the textures one in the new tool? Well, all the textures are combined um, in, order, in order to create the virtual texture, if that was the question. So, uh, yes, they are one. <laughs> they are one with the universe. Uh, looks so realistic. Thanks, Toma. Uh, do we have a question here? No, that's a huge comment. Um, de -de -de -de, scrolly, scrolly. It's not a goblin, it's my ex-wife. <laughs> Thanks for that comment. Uh, someone's asked, Skull is asked, is there a blueprint system? Uh, blueprints are proprietary to the Unreal system. I'm certainly going to nick their stuff. If you mean, is there an equivalent? We can do drag and drop logic without having to use Lua script, not plan for release. You'll have to learn a little bit of Lua scripting, and I think you'll be better for it. It's great to, 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 know, to know a little bit of programming and then to put that into your game logic. So don't be frightened of Lua. It's a really nice language. Um, do we have a question? Um, when is this video related alpha released? That doesn't really work as a question. I'll just move on to the next ones. Um, uh, Urgent Arts, will GG Max have a proper grid and snapping system similar to other programs? Um, the word proper is subjective, but I know exactly what you mean. And yes. It won't be fixed to 100 by 100. You'll be able to specify your grid metrics to whatever it is you want. And so once that's set, then it will be compatible with the assets that you probably have in mind that are grid friendly. So yes, uh, but there will be the, the things that we already have in Classic, the fixed grid, which you can then modify the dimension of, and snap, which is a clever way of snapping entities together because it detects the size of the entities and then magnetizes them side by side or one on top of the other. So we will be keeping those and make sure that, you know, they're as intuitive as was designed. Um, question, I have Quest, will I be able to sideload to use it? Um, you'll be able to get something called the link cable for your Quest headset. Just plug that in, install the Oculus software so you can get the latest version. Um, and then we will be supporting OpenXR, which will then use the runtime, the OpenXR runtime, which then works through the Oculus software via the link cable, and then your Oculus Quest will be able to play Game Guru Max. <laughs> it's crazy, I know, but all that is uh, how it works, and you will be able to use uh, Game Guru Max VR with your Oculus Quest. When is the next alpha? Um, this month. <laughs> I'm not telling you what day, because you start throwing tomatoes at me. Um, I'd like to say very soon, and it will be a version that I think you'll you'll quite enjoy using. Uh, but I am not going to give you a date. Let's just say soon, and in the month of July. Uh, going down to the bottom, it looks like we've only got one more question, so I might have scraped into the four or five minute mark that I was giving myself. This is again from Urgent Arts. Question, shouldn't the grid be set to powers of two, not set to 100. Well, you'll be able to choose that. you will be able to manually add the grid dimension that you want, be it a power of two or something very unusual. For example, when you go from uh, inches to meters in terms of, uh, of unit scale, you have to multiply it by something like 2.53, but it's certainly not a power of two. Uh, and yet you may still want that kind of grid system flexibility. And so that's what we'll be adding. And another one just popped in. Um, when is Multiveg premiered? That will be done after the terrain painting. So once we're painting the terrains, it will be a natural want to be able to start painting the grass and have that grass work really well with the terrain paint. And so we're going to work on that as a sort of a whole. It'll be part of the terrain system, complement the terrain system, but done after we've broke the back of virtual texturing, fast performance, great flexibility in painting, and reasonable storage when you're creating these large virtual textures. So I will leave it there. Thanks for your questions. And any questions that pop in between now and when I end this live broadcast, I will capture and then store onto the Game Guru forum and you can read your question there along with my answer. So I hope you enjoyed this live broadcast. I certainly enjoyed ad-libbing it. <laughs> and I invite you next week to check out the next sneak peek video, which will have slightly higher production values. 
So until then, thanks very much for your attention and have a great rest of week. Bye-bye.